This was the eastern end. Here were the grocer's boy Prox's bicycle. From here, it ran westward some half dozen blocks. Not a trace of it remains, except its people. They're still here, still occupying the same stretch of space, but in a different way. Everything sparkling and new and tidy and kept that way. The Bennett floors, for instance, and the Bennett children. Things are much quieter at the Bennetts than they used to be. The Hansons next door have a nice apartment. Roomy, bright, living space actually large enough for all those Hansons. Five rooms plus bath and kitchen. Means more housework. For some. The Tweed house is farther along, one of the large places, spotless of course. The Tweeds are great washers and scrubbers. Oops. Great deal of washing and scrubbing goes on nowadays. The McLean kitchen has a new modern look, as do the McLean ladies. The kids still play in the same spot, but the pavement and the cars and trucks are gone. There are trees and grass now. There are backyards, too. And private entrances to homes that are homes. I'm on. Hey. You're in my shot. Jim, Jenny, come on. Gina, Kurt, Sally. Are they hanging straight? Tough outside. This was the western end. Where Nick Brown is standing now was the western end of Oak Street. This is how it used to be. One of Toronto's older streets and not one of its best. Aged houses, crowded quarters, squalor. Not quite a slum, but close. Call it substandard. Life was unavoidably substandard too. People lived here for lack of anything better. Not by choice. Stop her! You stop watching me. Who are you talking to? What? Supper time for the Browns. On some streets, the high point of any family's day. Work and school behind, rest and relaxation ahead, the day's adventures to talk about. Hardly a time for silence. Trouble was, the Oak Street day was often best forgotten. There weren't many good days. Take the morning, for instance. Any morning. Nick, Jenny. Get up. The climb up the stairs to the only bathroom and the only source of running water. Six separate families in this one house. Six families, 19 people, one bathroom. One bedroom for the Browns, plus the couches in the other room for Nick and Jenny. One room in which to dress and keep the family clothes. Every morning, the same confusion and disorder. Things mislaid and lost, everyone getting in everyone else's way. Natural enough in a room that served a family of five as kitchen, dining room, living room. With the older Browns out of the way, the all-purpose room became the laundry. Every day was wash day for Mrs. Brown. Keeping clean was a daily battle 
and a lost cause. Dirt always won out on Oak Street. The children got dirty. All children do anywhere, at school, at play. But Oak Street children suffered a dirtiness which it seemed impossible to even fight against. Almost every family had the same problem. Miss Bailey, what's the matter? I'm sorry, Mrs. Brown. Nick has lice in his hair again. Oh, I wash his head every week. Where do they come from? It's these old places. Sometimes, the vermin was human and the shame was secret. You want a candy, Jenny? Oh, come on. Don't be scared. kinds on Oak Street. Bad people, good people. There were the kind and patient Kellys, old age pensioners, in one stove heated room. And Mrs. Davis, in her cold water duplex that had seen better times. Every day the endless trips from water tap to the room with the kitchen range. Every day the endless tubs of water to be heated. Always the worry that the chill and damp might give the children colds. For some, the Oak Street day was not so bad. Families like the Jakes, their home was a little bigger and warmer than most, although there were rats to contend with. But the Jakes seemed able to make the best of a bad lot. Others were not so patient or cheerful. What kind of a man are you? Is this the best you can do with another kid coming? I'd like to walk out of here. Just walk out. Then go on, get out. Not all tempers flared. Some were dulled and diverted by escape from the bad lot. The tavern was warmer and gayer than home for some. So were the movies. And if one couldn't afford these pleasures, there was the street itself. The last resort was home. Something to eat, Billy. Should wear a hat. It's cold outside. Ain't it, honey? Real cold, Billy. Almost anything was better than home. Or Oak Street. Jim Brown is in the building trades as a wage earner. His working hours are spent helping to erect modern little bungalows, which he can't afford. The most modest new home is out of his reach to buy or rent. He'd consider himself a lucky man to live in one of these. Most houses newly built cost more today than much larger houses cost a few years back. Costs have soared. Prices have soared. Apartment rents are high. Too high for Jim Brown. Home builders must compete with industry builders for cement and glass and steel and labor. We're an expanding nation. We build fabulous structures to house machines and motors and assembly lines. We raise up mountainous shelters for commerce and finance. But we can't give Jim Brown a good home he can afford. That is to say, we couldn't. Hey, we're going to get out of here. What are you just talking for, just about? Just for a while, and then we get a new place. Look. What? Oh, I didn't want you. They're going to tear this.
this place down. Down came Oak Street. Down came the verminous walls, the unclean, unhealthy rooms. And down came the fire hazards, the juvenile delinquency, the drunkenness, the broken marriages. And up rose something new, the nation's first large-scale public housing project, to be called Regent Park. 1,300 homes, both houses and apartments, within the means of Jim Brown and the rest. Rents based on income. Kelly, the pensioner, $29 a month. Brown, the truck driver, $45 a month. Jake's, the toolmaker, $75 a month. Brown paying a little for Kelly, Jake's paying a little for them both. And the people of the city and the rest of the country putting in a share. seemed it never would happen. The day finally came when they could move in. A raw spring day, but sunny. They were a sight when they arrived with their bags and boxes and bundles. Like refugees on the road, instead of the new tenants of number 640 Regent Park. Covering the luxury of a little space, of doors that can stand safely open, of rooms that are for sleeping and nothing else, even one of these for your own. Hard to credit that this home could have come out of old Oak Street, or if it had, that you would be here to live in it and care for it. This was the western end of Oak Street, and it ran eastward some half dozen blocks. Not a trace of it remains, except its people. old attitudes, not a trace remains. The face may be the same, but the expression is different. It's brighter and more interested and friendlier. Life has changed along the quarter mile that was Oak Street. They're all there, the Kellys, the Hansons, the Tweeds, 
1,300 families, old and young, large and small, poor and not so poor. Thirteen hundred families in thirteen hundred homes. Just a drop in the bucket, of course. Just one corner of one city. There are other Kellys and Browns in corners of all our cities. Too many. Too many Oak Streets for a rich, resourceful nation. But one has gone for good. <laughs>